Hello everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. My name is Julia Bird and I am a STEM ambassador for the West Tennessee STEM Hub. Today we'll be making homemade ice cream. This is a lesson on freezing point depression. So the materials you will need for this project are table salt, a lot of it, ice, water, a Tupperware bowl with a lid that secures very firmly, cups of non-dairy coffee, coffee creamer, creamer. Uh, today I'm using the Coffee Mate Originals, but for a tastier ice cream, I would recommend the International Delight French Vanilla. And you will also need the smallest spoon you can find in your house. So before we actually begin making the ice cream, we should go ahead and go over some background about freezing point depression related to this activity. So water normally freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Here in America, we like to use Fahrenheit. So zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists like to use Celsius because Celsius is used worldwide. And adding water to salt, such as we will do in this activity, lowers the temperature that water freezes at. So that means that we can get the water colder before it actually freezes. Um, the low temperature around the coffee creamer is going to help our creamer actually freeze and become ice cream faster than it would in the freezer. Instead of freezing at zero degrees Celsius, the water used in this activity after adding salt would actually freeze at negative 10 degrees Celsius, which is very, very cold. So let's go ahead and start making some ice cream. Okay, so first things first, you are going to go ahead and grab your Tupperware bowl as so. And then what I want you all to do is go ahead and grab your table salt and just sprinkle a very generous amount. So much salt. If you don't add enough salt, this activity unfortunately will not work. We will go over why that is after we go ahead and make our ice cream. But as you can see, I'm just making a very, very good layer. We don't really want to be able to see the bottom of our Tupperware. Let me see. So this should be a pretty good amount. As you can see, it's very thick. Okay, the next step is to grab your coffee creamers. I'm going to use one. After this experiment, you should go ahead and try with multiple. That way you can share with your siblings, your parents. Okay, so next we will add some ice. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Pan, go ahead and cover up that coffee creamer. There we go. It was being a little stubborn. Okay, and lastly, you're going to add your water. All righty then. We are going to put our lid on our Tupperware bowl. Make sure it's all the way on there because we don't want to spill it on ourselves, our friends our computers, all of that good stuff. Okay, so go ahead and look at the bottom. You can see a bunch of salt. Our goal right now is to mix it to where we can't see any more salt. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We will want our water to look a little bit cloudy. As you can see, our water looks pretty foggy here. I'm just gonna look at it. I think mine could actually use a little more salt, surprisingly. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit here on top. All right. We really wanna make sure we get that salt in the water. Okay. Now our water looks very cloudy, very cloudy indeed. All right, perfect. So what I want you all to do is give your tubs a good shake. We're gonna shake them for five minutes. And then at the end of our five minutes, we will check back in. Okay, everyone, it's been five minutes. So let's go ahead and do the reveal. So I'm going to take the lid off the Tupperware. And let's see, we've got our coffee creamer here. Give it a shake. Let's see, it sounds pretty solid. Let's go ahead and check it. Hey, there we go, we have our ice cream. Can you all see that? Not a liquid at all. Okay, let's try it. Woo! Here we go. Awesome. 
Okay. So you have your homemade ice cream. Congrats. Go ahead and give us a like, comment if you like your ice cream. Um, what I want you to do now is go ahead and put your finger in the water just real quick. Whew. Do you feel how cold that is? And that is because of freezing point depression. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about that topic real quick. I'm gonna put my Tupperware to the side. Let me go ahead and share my PowerPoint with you all real quick. Okay. Here we go. All right. So, how does freezing point depression work? You felt how cold that water is. You would almost think that it should be frozen, right? Well, freezing point depression is a colligative property. So a colligative property means that it depends on the number of solute particles in a solution. What is a solute? What is a solution? Well, the solute in our case would be the salt. The solute is something that is dissolved. And the solvent is going to be the liquid that the solute is dissolved in. In our case, the salt was dissolved in the water. Both of those together, that makes a solution. So the more particles in our water means that the lower the freezing point can be. So a colligative property, again, means that the more particles in the solvent, the lower the freezing point depression will be. Here, our table salt, the chemical formula is NaCl. And after getting into this water, the NaCl is going to break apart into two particles, the sodium and the chloride. So instead of one particle, it's now going to be two. Um, as an example, something that breaks into three particles, it was not used in our experiment today, but calcium chloride would break apart into one calcium and two chloride molecules for a total of three particles. You see here the one calcium, the two chlorides. So that means that the freezing point depression would be even lower. This water would be even colder if we use something like calcium chloride. So this property was used to make this homemade ice cream. It's pretty tasty, pretty delicious. But uh, an actual real world application that is used all the time is salting the roads. So we salt the roads before a snowstorm because whenever we put salt on these roads and it snows, that actually lowers the freezing point, meaning that the water will stay a liquid um, above that certain temperature. So typically we actually salt our roads with the table salt, the NaCl, meaning that the roads can get to negative 10 degrees Celsius before freezing. That's pretty amazing, huh? Well, I hope you liked this lesson. Again, give us a thumbs up if you really liked it and we'll keep them coming. All right, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.